Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to ProfCon 2023. I'd like to make a start by thanking our Prof's sponsors, Isuzu Trucks, and the event's main sponsor, National Highways. We need to start with a little bit of housekeeping. No fire alarms, toilets just outside the door, fire exits, easily labelled. Mobile phones off please, and if you do need to take a call, please leave quietly and, uh, and then come back in quietly. We've got quite a packed schedule for you today, um, and uh, I'm sure that you're all going to enjoy the events. Um, and really look forward to uh, quite a good debate in our uh, session we'll have a little bit later on. So the first thing we'll do is uh, bring Richard up to um, do his welcome address. Good morning everybody, thanks for, for coming. A small but select band of people, it's not how many people you have, and I'll stick by this, it's who you have. And it's about having the people that can make the changes and contribute. But I want to be part of this platform. So, right. Yeah, I'd like to thank Paul Gregory and and Nick Phipps for their continued contributions and help, like during the year that they get me here. Um, Mary um, from the IVR, who's a constant contributor and help, and is a proper strategic partner. Um, Derek, long-suffering Derek, um, we're becoming like a couple, but, uh, <laughs> and I can't wait for the divorce. <laughs> but no, really, honestly, it, it's sort of like, I've always been like the figurehead of whatever it is, but although I like everyone to think it's a dictatorship, it is, but I do get the help from, from the people that matter. But a big thanks must go to... Um, uh, my PA and who's now actually officially secretary of prof and that's Sue, Susan Hamilton is she? Yeah. So, uh, well Sue is a big help. She's now also the treasury which means I've got to re budget for Royal Ascot next week mm -hmm. because she's very strong. But Sue and Derek her husband who I always hear in the background what's he ever want now? Right, doesn't he know what time it is, doesn't he know it's Sunday, so on and so forth. So thanks for that, Derek. And look, Sue's waving to me from outside. Good job. And I also must apologise for the invites that said, for those of you who've gotten that said 9.30. 9.30 should be breakfast and the start was 11 o'clock, so I've got to take responsibility for, for that. So I think today's conferences and presentations will present a watershed moment <laughs> in this industry. I'm immensely proud of the direction of pros, something massively close to my heart, and I think it's gonna be, in time, the main vehicle for getting things done in the industry, and getting back our independent recovery industry identity from those that masquerade have been us. So I'm not gonna pontificate, I'm gonna get on, and let's get to work. Thank you. A lot of you have um, met Terry before. Um, he um, presented last year uh, at ProfCom 22. Um, a bit of background, he's been part of Met Police for 44 years, Director of Operations, um, which is position he's held for nine years. He's the um, lead for the recovery group for the National Police Chief Council. He's got numerous qualifications, some that I could only wish to have. Member of the Chartered Institute of Management, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, a long-standing member of the IVR, and a true supporter of the sector scheme, encouraging all the other 34 police forces to use the sector scheme as their minimum standard. Not something that he can force them to do, but I know he fully encourages them to do. And something that a lot of you won't realise is the amount of work that Terry and his team 
um, alongside the Home Office, are put into the stat fee challenges that we've had over the last four or five years. They've been tirelessly working for us and eventually got it across the line for us. So. I'm quite happy to take questions, probably at the end, because we are we are uh, stretched for time. So myself, Matt and Mick will be around. So if anybody wants anything answered, we'll try and do our best. Anything that we can't answer, we'll, we'll take away and, and get back to you by Derek and Richard. So it's just three objectives for today, just to update you on where we are with the stat fees. Um, the next, next point is, uh, I've called it secondary legislation, but it's primary legislation, so that's, that's a typo. That's what's coming next in 2024, uh, and that should be of interest to you as well. And finally, I'm not going to go overboard on this. I've just got one slide at the end that just talks about what we've done, I've done, Matt, Mick, in the NPCC, just to get the EV issue tabled. Um, so I'm not going to steal anybody's thunder because it's on the agenda and we spoke about it this morning at the pros meeting. Uh, but just to give you a sense of what, what, what I've done to progress it through the, uh, all, all the 34 police forces, which again was quite difficult. Uh, so there are the three objectives. Um, so we start with the stat please. It has taken five years. Five years. It's been five years, quite frankly, of really hard work. I am 25 years of age. You can see what the drain it's had on me. Uh, spoke with various ministers, uh, various senior leaders within the Home Office, and for those of you that have ever dealt with the Home Office, you know, they, they are a tricky, tricky organisation. I'm being really polite. But eventually, it was almost five years to a day, we've got it over the line. Um, and it's a significant achievement. And it's right, it's right that we've done that. It's right for the industry, but it's certainly right for the police schemes. But it was an awful lot of work. And I know that you know that, and I'm not standing up here to take any praise, but you know, it, it was a significant achievement. A 28% increase, that was with effect from the 6th of April. It could have come in in January, by the way, but there was a delay, there was a delay. Uh, so it was scheduled to come in in, in January, uh, but any, at the end of the day, we, we got it over the line for the 6th of April. So that's out there now. What I also did, um, with, with the help of Matt and Mick, is run what I call an extraordinary meeting. So once a year, all police forces come together for our annual conference, normally in Derby. Some of you guys uh, attend that, which I'm grateful for. What I was asked to do by my boss, who's uh, Joe Shiner, who's the Chief <coughs> Constable of Sussex, was to run a meeting um, with the commercial uh, guys and girls from each police forces. So we had the all police forces there from the vehicle recovery schemes, but we also had all the commercial, heads of commercial. And the reason for that is just to go through with them some of the um, issues that you guys have told us numerous times at uh, meetings such as this and uh, and our annual annual conference and to ensure that they actually understand their contracts what they're asking for and the obligations that they need to to have around the, the legal side so they all turned up which is good barring one or two um, now during that, that, that meeting, we gave them a very, very, very clear steer of our position as the NPCC. And that is the additional um, staff fees that needs to go to the recovery industry. Very clear steer. Uh, the other steer we gave them was around pace storage. Uh, and there's a few slides later on, so I can certainly update you on, on, on that area. So over 90% of forces have actually passed on that, that stat fee increase, that 28% stat fee increase, uh, over 90%. And this is information I had last month. So it's probably a little bit higher now. Uh, there's one or two forces that are hanging out. Uh, some of them are waiting for uh, new contracts to come in. Um, but, but on the whole, well over 90% have passed that fee on which I think is good news for you guys, good news for us in the scheme, because it needs to work. Um, there's still work to be done on pace storage. 
uh, and it's something that we really picked up on. I think it was Mac actually that, that, that one of the conferences that that highlighted to us. We just didn't know, quite frankly, and that was quite enlightening to us. Um, but the, the, this is a survey we did uh, in September, so the date is a little bit old, but it gives you a sense. Um, so it's five and a half thousand pace vehicles retained by the forces. Uh, average number of pace vehicles is 119. Because um, we're unique in the Met, as we always like to think we are, if you take us out, it, it drops down slightly. So there's a little table down the bottom, it might be hard to see, but basically we've broken it down into pace vehicles stored for one year, right up to five years, with just a percentage on the, on the end. But you can see the vast majority are between one and two years. So some of the, uh, the so we wanted to not, not sort of antagonise a group, but we, what we wanted to do was, was make the, the forces, the commercial people, and the, 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 the people responsible for the schemes just to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, so these are some of the questions that we, we posed to them. Um, uh, uh, you know, they're up there. Do you know where your vehicles are? Do you know uh, where they're stored? How do you do a chase-up system? Are there regular audits? Do you physically go out to your operator's yards? Do you check? You know, some of these vehicles, most of them, are subjects of the most serious crime. Yet, you know, that they didn't appear to, to understand how they should be maintained, kept, and stored. So that was quite enlightening. Uh, and the bottom bit down the bottom, which I'll say to you all again, is the, is the contracts. You know, are they being relet? Same charges? Do they need to be reviewed with you guys? And we actively encourage that. We also actively encourage contract variation. So if they're in mid mid uh, contract, we've got three or four years to go, there's nothing to stop you, you guys, approaching forces to ask about a contract variation. So more stuff that we, we, we deliberately um, inform the group just to, to create a little bit of a debate. Uh, and the first one is just from an ethical standpoint, should forces be paying for pay storage? Uh, we're saying that we should. We don't expect anything from you guys for nothing. That, that's not fair, unethical, <laughs> and, and Richard's having a clutch. But, you know, let, let's be honest, we, 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 we said that, we stand by that, uh, and that's, that's, that's only right, proper, and fair. 72% um, of forces, and this was as of last month, uh, still do not pay you guys for vehicles, and they're our highest risk vehicles, the vehicles that have been involved in serious crime, serious road traffic collisions, etc. So, so whilst we've made a lot of progress on the stat fees and passing it on, where, where I need your help again is around the pace vehicles. Uh, and Sorry, just in relation to the pace vehicles, we, the police, do not expect a free service from you. Um, but we can only, I can't tell individual forces what to do, how they do it. I can only offer guidance, there's, there's lots of guidance, um, but I can't tell, tell them what to do. That's for each chief constable. I want you to be going to forces asking these questions. You should be asking. You know, you, you're the industry. Dare I say, it might antagonise you. I don't want you signing up to contracts that you can't fulfil. I know Richard said it before. I know I've said it before. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work for us in the police service. It doesn't work for you because, you know, you're not getting your, your, your correct compensation. And the whole thing is just not good. So I need you, those um, recovery operators that are not receiving any money for pace vehicles, to have that conversation with forces. I would actively encourage you. They know about it, because I told them. I told them in March, they all know about it. I think maybe one or two are just not, not acknowledging, are uh, burying their heads slightly. So, not my plea to you, I would actively encourage you that if you're not 
receiving any compensation for pace vehicles, then you need to have a conversation with that force. There are just two other points on that. I think that you didn't mention was I think each police force received a letter from Judge Sharma laying out what our expectations. And I think the meeting that you chaired in March was the first time we actually had procurement people come to the meeting. So the people dealing with the contracts would be aware of some of the forthcoming challenges and queries around the case storage. Thanks, Mick. Yes, that's a really important point. So Joe Shiner, who, who I report to, sent the letter out to all chief constables, so they're aware of this, what you said. And as Mick said, we didn't just invite the, the scheme, the police scheme managers, or whatever you call them, we invited the commercial leads as well, so they know about it. So it, it's really, really important that you take that away, what I've just said, and it's really, really important for the industry and the schemes that you start asking questions around your pay storage. Um, I can't emphasise that enough. Last year I spoke to you and I think one of the sessions we talked about at that point, we weren't really sure what the Home Office agreed as part of the consultation around the whole SNAP fee piece. But you'll understand as well that there were a number of questions or changes that we wanted in legislation that weren't necessarily just the SNAP fees, there was other bits that were came through as well. So on the 6th of April, one of the big bits for us, and hopefully you've seen sight of this as well, is that there were some changes made to uh, 165A seizures uh, in terms of who can claim the vehicle. Now I'm not sure um, if, if you're actively involved in the tendering and reviewing of documents, it's probably done at the police stations and then you're notified of the release of the vehicle. But for us that was actually a bit of a game changer. So effectively what that did is it took the burden away from any person being able to claim the vehicle to being the person responsible for the vehicle at the time of seizure. Um, it was an error of abuse that we'd seen for many, many years, and fortunately for us as well, the Home Office saw it as an error of abuse, and we're quite happy to change it. So that was a little bit unexpected. Originally, they'd said to us, all they were going to move forward with was probably the staff fee change, and then they threw that one as a bit of a, an extra for us. So that came into effect on the 6th of April. I can confirm from the Met Police standpoint, that's exactly how we enforce it. So now only the registered key or owner at the time of seizure of the vehicle can come to claim it, and that has created a bit of a dynamic, and obviously it's refuting quite a lot of changes. Um, or claims for vehicles. But on top of that, um, we had moved forward with this project with the Home Office for some time, expecting even more. Um, so there were a number of things that we discussed originally. Uh, Terry alluded to secondary legislation. The reason why they couldn't implement them is because it fell under primary legislation, which required a much more long, you know, long-term process through the Commons, the House of Lords, uh, whereas the statutory instrument process is much easier to change with the sponsorship of an MP. So certain things that we weren't able to deal with in particular was, um, some of you may be aware, but with the Section 99 Road Traffic Act, Road Traffic Regulations Act recoveries, there is a civil debt provision in the legislation, so we can chase unpaid debt um, as a civil debt uh, with the owners of the vehicles. Okay, it's not something I, I believe any police service currently does, um, because it only applies to those recoveries, but there is a provision for that. That would only be the debt incurred as a part of the statutory fee process, so those charges that we would otherwise have been able to recover as part of the stamp fees, but that, that is an option. So we said to the Home Office that what we really need is parity with all legislation. So with these stamp fee changes, you'll see in the legislation, they've harmonised a lot of different police recovery powers and, and harmonised the, uh, the, the payment schedules. And we've asked them to do the same with civil debt recovery as well. Um, so they are supportive of it, but it requires primary legislation changes, which may take time. So I think they've intimated to us at the moment that uh, we'd asked as well that the, there was a mechanism built into the <coughs> regulations around the review of the stat fees. I think everyone in this room would, would have preferred that if it was laid down in statute that they had to review them every two years in line with inflation, whatever it was. Unfortunately, they weren't willing to do that. What they did is they committed to reviewing it systematically every few years. I think the next time is actually 2025. Yeah, so that they've said that uh, in 2025 they will review the fees again. Uh, and I think, you know, from an MPCC point of view, that's something we've got to drive with yourselves um, to basically make sure that the Home Office on that because as we know in 2008 uh, when they last reviewed them beforehand there was that obligation again they said they reviewed them every few years and then there we were in 2023 finally getting the uh, staff fee increases um, so yeah we're looking at the civil debt recovery uh, in, in addition to that as well uh, we're looking to reduce the number of days that a vehicle seized under 165A so you know insurance not recording these vehicles can be retained 
Uh, from a MET perspective, we've looked at the data, we're basically seeing that if a vehicle is claimed within about four to five days, it generally isn't claimed. Therefore, sitting on that vehicle for the 14 days is just a waste of storage, it's a waste of cost, uh, and we prefer to just get rid of those vehicles as soon as possible. So we put forward a proposition that the vehicles could be uh, destroyed after seven days. Um, there was some technicalities around the legislation, and we would try and work through some drafting with the Home Office sisters. Uh, I won't bore you with it, but we'd have to change the word days and working days. Uh, and that, again, would have required a primary legislation change. So, again, the Home Office is supportive of it. We think we've got a solution. Uh, that will hopefully be something that comes in 2025, with that primary legislation change. And then another area that I don't know how many forces are actively doing, uh, devolved power work for the uh, DVLA to bring in your vehicle excise duty vehicles. You'll have noticed that they were not included in the staff fee increases. Uh, I did approach the DVLA at the time that they were going through with the Home Office. Unfortunately, they hadn't engaged early enough and therefore the Home Office couldn't consider those uh, pieces of legislation as part of that. However, I have been approached by the DVLA and we are now working with them um, to assist in trying to put forward a case to increase the staff fees for the vehicle excise duty offences as well. So I haven't got time scales, that's down to the DVLA, but we will do what we can on the police side to support them with that to work with the Home Office as well. Um, yeah, and I think that was the main pieces. There, there is a, there's another piece of legislation that, as well that ties into the DVLA staff, staff fee charges, um, which may be something we look into as well. It depends whether or not forces pick up the requirement to actually deal with that, but we advise you on the specifics of that at a later time. But um, yeah, they're the main elements that we'll be working for, forward for 2025, although subject to any points being raised by Richard. Um. <laughs> EVs, the, oh, the, the consultation yeah. and the schedule on EVs. I don't know if Terry's going to bring that up yeah. in a bit, but that's going to be, in two years' time, there'll probably be about 4 million EVs in this country. There's about 1.5 million now. And in terms of pace, storage, where, you know, whether not, like, they're just too expensive to everything for us not to have some sort of different legislation yeah. for, for that. So, you know, it's part of my. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, but it does need to be part of the consultation that, that, that's 100, taken 100 percent so i mean i'm conscious that evs as an agenda item there is a slide actually terry's got so i can confirm that the conversation has been had about evs and creating a separate charging what we actually went back to the home office and said effectively was that we felt that you can't deal with the ev problem by just putting in a separate charge matrix but the, the bigger the issue is bigger than that it needs a whole system approach rewrite relook at the legislation, look at responsibilities within you know, the fire service, the police service, the recovery operators. It's not good enough to just say you can charge an extra hundred pounds to recover a vehicle because that doesn't properly address the issues and the risks. So that is something they're looking at, but we've obviously said to them, we don't want just to take the charges, we want it as a bigger project, which I know you've been involved in some of the meetings as well. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll actually be showing sort of as yeah. we go along why, why we should be doing that, but yeah. I just want to bring it up. Sure yeah, that's it. So I'll, I'll just sort of conclude, if I may, which is just on electric vehicles, as Max said, there is plenty on the agenda. But what I can say is that I wrote a report to my bosses in the NPCC two, three months ago now, uh, quite a detailed report, but just about some of the issues that you all know about. You know, this is not new, but I just made it, obviously that's not the report, it was a couple of pages, but they're just the key issues. Uh, and for us, it was not only about the police recovery schemes, it was also about our police vehicles, because we had internal workshops to fix our vehicles. We were being forced down the line in London uh, by the mayor to, uh, to, to get the net zero carbon quite quickly. He's brought that forward and all the sort of politics and fallout that, that will come as part of that. Um, but also the police tactics as well, is they actively uh, ran, for want of a better word, vehicles, other vehicles, you know, electric vehicles, as you know better than me, uh, very different parts caused by Brexit, apparently. Um, it's a whole minefield. So it wasn't just about the police recovery, it was also about our <coughs> internal workshops and the workshops of our contractors, not least the storage area that they would require when a broken or damaged uh, police vehicle goes into either our premises or a contractor uh, premises. So it's a whole sort of a whole thing from a police perspective. But there's some of the things that, that 
that's in the paper. That went to the, the board, I don't know what it's called, I'm not that senior, uh, the chief sort of NPCC person. Uh, that went six weeks ago and it was all approved. So that, that's good news. From an NPCC perspective, what they're saying is everything that, that's been written, Terry, which is mainly your work, not my work, what, what you've told us, that, that, that you know they acknowledge it's a problem. Um, I've been working with the Home Office. Home Office acknowledges it's a problem. It's now with the DFT, and that's where it's sat at the moment. So DFT is probably the right place for it to be, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I've suggested that there needs to be uh, a white paper written, much along the lines of what Matt's just said, that, that has the views from all interested parties. You know, the, the, the strategic partnership of PROF and all the partners within POP, PROF, that makes absolute sense. You guys from the industry as well, um, to get those collective views in. Now, quite frankly, that, that, that work is, is, is a lot of work. To put together a government white paper uh, is, is, is not only <coughs> unique, you need a, a, a good wordsmith, um, but also it's, it's, it's a lot of work as well. Last week, I was approached by uh, one of the top five consulting agency, PA Consulting. Uh, they, they want to take it on. Uh, I wasn't enamoured with what they were saying to me. I think they were just touting for business, quite frankly. So I'm not actually enamoured with them. Um, but you get the sense of it. It probably needs it probably needs one of the big five consultancies uh, to, to take this on. I don't think I, I can take it on. It, it's, it's above me. Uh, and to get it done properly, I think you know certainly Prof and the members would probably need to contribute something towards that. So, so that's where we are at the moment. So I've got the, the major uh, consultancy firms in London, not chomping at the bit, but, but you know, they're interested, who wouldn't be? Uh, at the moment, it's just the money side. So we've just <coughs> got to work through the money side, how that might, might happen. Uh, I think in terms of partners and who can contribute, you know, it, it, it's really good. The prof has given us that platform. Um, so, so that's where we are with the white paper. I, I think it's a white paper. I've got the support from my bosses. Home office are interested. They're saying, great. It's with the DFT. They're putting together some sort of working group, etc. But it's not gone as quickly as I, I'd like. And bear in mind, stat fees was five years. You know, I'd like to think it's a lot quicker than that. But, but it's going on the, on the, in the right direction. Uh, and finally, just before I wrap up, I'd just like to thank Richard and Derek just for giving us the platform. I think Prof has been brilliant for us. You know, we, we, it was slightly fragmented before. We didn't really know. We operated a little bit in a silo. Um, but this, since Prof has been introduced and since we've been a member of Prof, honestly, it, it's done, it's just worked wonders. So for us, the police service, it's been brilliant. So thank you for that. Right, listen, thank, thank you guys, thank you, thank Matt. Frank, Mick, because you don't just pay lip service to being strategic parts of Prof. If I pick up the phone to any one of you or do anything, it's done. We had that one meeting with the Home Office, uh, and then you you carried that on from there. Um, I met with Joe Shine the last last year to discuss all these different aspects, and like she ordered a review. It, it, it was a catalyst for the meet for the national meeting that you've had, and there's interest all along. So. And also, we'd never have got the staff fees across the line without you guys. So thank you for coming. Thank you for your continued partnership and your continued contributions. Thank you very much.